Welcome to the NCDWI Guy podcast, where defenders of the Constitution assemble to prepare for courtroom battle, and firm owners gather to develop marketing strategies that will revolutionize the practice of criminal defense. Here's your host, the NCDWI Guy, Jake Minnick. Hello, fellow freedom fighters, and welcome to episode 107 of the NC DWI Guy podcast. On today's episode, we are talking about systems, innovative systems. Quarter two, we are in the midst of quarter number two of 2022, and our focus at the office here at Minic Law for this quarter is innovative systems. We have every quarter a focus on one of our core values. Um, So our core values have the acronym SMILE, uh, Student Mindset, Moral Compass, Innovative Systems, Legal Leadership, and Everybody's Rowing are our five core values. Um, So this quarter at the office, we are focusing on innovative systems. It's been what we've been talking a lot during our weekly huddles. And so I thought I would just kind of share what we uh, are doing at the office uh, from an innovative system standpoint, and uh, hopefully kind of ignite a fire on the use of systems in your office. So first of all, let me just say, Anybody that's listening to this, again, whether you are a one-man operation, whether you're an employee at a firm, whether that's a legal assistant or attorney, um, whether you're a small firm, large firm, it doesn't matter. Systems are critical to success. Some of our core values at the office may be somewhat unique to us or may be like very particular to who we are as a team. Innovative systems is a core value that really should be shared by every firm. Because if you do not have systems, you do not have a business. At the end of the day, if you do not have systems, you really don't have a law firm. You have a group of people that are working together, all doing their own their own thing under a, a shared name, but it's not a business if there are no systems. And this is true, again, even for the sole practitioner. Um, early on, early on after I uh, began my practice, before I had made my first hire, I started moving into kind of this systematic thinking. And then as I'll kind of explain uh, by story means uh, here in a few minutes, I really gravitated towards systems about two years into my practice. But systems are critical to the success of every business and thus critical to the success of of every law firm. Now, when I started my practice, when I started Minnick Law, uh, I think it was actually started law offices of James Minnick because I didn't even have a corporation. So even the system of being in business was not was not there yet. But day one at the firm, my systems began to develop and they look ridiculous now looking back on them. I mean, they have been upgraded and developed. And uh, we have outsourced uh, uh, some of our most important systems because there are software companies that are doing this kind of stuff better than we could at the office. But back in 2010, when I started my start, hung my shingle, it was a mess. Our systems were a mess. It was a, a, the real wild west of, of, uh, running a practice. And so, you know, some of the things that I was using relatively early on, I had gotten some, you know, an iPad and an Apple, Apple uh, MacBook, And so started using a lot of just the features that are available on Mac eye contacts, um, in eye contacts, I would put a lot of important, uh, case, uh, uh, information about any particular client's case. I would go through all of the um, uh, payments by that particular client. I would share, um, you know, uh, case updates in the in the eye contact, so at least it was electronic and could be seen. And then we used iCalendar for um, uh, scheduling court dates and for setting deadlines. And um, uh, we used the the Apple uh, Tasks at one point for that. In Dropbox, there was 
uh, everything under the sun. We had a Word document that acted as a case management um, a worksheet, you know, an intake form that you know served a number of different purposes that was pre preform uh, filled, and so we would just use that intake for any new client that came in the door. We used, um, I don't even remember what uh, finance company or not finance, but what payment company we were using at the time to collect credit card payments. Um, our marketing uh, consisted of uh, developing some brochures and informational guides using Vistaprint and sending out, you know, letters to people that have been charged with certain things. So, you know, th there began to develop some of these, some of these systems, but everything was scattered everywhere. I used physical files and Dropbox and eye contact. So I was updating case information in multiple places. Um, if I needed to find a piece of information, I couldn't remember if it was going to be found in eye contacts and the actual physical file. It was a mess. And, you know, try as you might maybe to help other people uh, as, as, as people started to join the team, try as you might to have other people uh, start to follow that it was not user friendly. I mean, this was this was a very kind of bare bones, makeshift, cheap um, a way to develop systems. But I will say that it was a good first start. And um, so again, your systems don't have you don't have to get the best case management software available. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars a month. Um, uh, for a case management software, if you're a sole practitioner, you don't need that. Just because it works for for somebody else doesn't mean um, there's not not a better and cheaper system that you might be able to use. We haven't gotten into using Microsoft Teams at this point. I know a lot of people are using that, but there's all kinds of I would say cost effective ways of of kind of implementing systems at the office. One goal that I had very early on. Um, uh, pretty much from, from day one at the practice is that I wanted to be a paperless law firm. I wanted to uh, make sure that I wasn't going to get bogged down by uh, files that everything that we would have would be electronically stored and accessible in case you're missing it. You didn't have the physical file and that existed. Now, did we perfectly follow that each and every time we needed to file something? No, we didn't. But um, it, it was it was uh, kind of this vision early on, 2010, early part of 2011. I want to be operating as a paperless law firm. But again, looking back at it, it was a mess, you know, and, and extremely difficult to get other people up to speed on because it just was not intuitive. If you'd never used uh, Apple computer before, first of all, that's going to be kind of a a jump in itself. But secondly, it was just very um, you know, miss, mix and match to, to kind of, you know, suit what we were looking for, not everything all being kind of in one place or really with a lot of, um, uh, foresight in terms of where, where are we trying to go with these systems? So very much the wild west. Um, I went on a, a beach trip, I believe it was in the late summer of 2012, I believe it was 2012. And I read the uh, uh, E-Myth book by um, uh, Michael Gerber. So read the E-Myth. Um, my, I was at the beach house, uh, my brother-in-law, a uh, bunch of bunch of books on the shelf um, at the beach house that were left there by, by the, you know, the the, the beach house owner, um, my brother-in-law uh, pulled pulled off the e-myth and he said, you know, I think you really like this book. Why don't you, why don't you go read um, uh, the e-myth? You know, it'd be, it'd be, uh, I think pretty, pretty cool since you're uh, so kind of into business right now. And so I went out and started reading that book and I, I had completed it by the time that we left the uh, the beach uh, uh, by the time our vacation had ended, and I can remember sitting on the beach reading the emith, and just almost it was like my mind had exploded. I do not have a business background. I you know wasn't wasn't a uh, you know didn't have a MBA or any type of like undergraduate studies that was business specific philosophy and undergraduate. 
um, you know, wasn't kind of focused in on business during high school or college or anything along those lines. Um, law school, I took one class on law practice management, and that was the only time it was a one hour pass fail course. That was the only time in law school that we really focused on business. Um, and I'll never forget the Dean of Students at the uh, prestigious and now defunct Charlotte School of Law. Uh, Dean Clark was awesome guy. He taught the, uh, the law practice management course. And he said, this is a pass and fail course. You can pay attention or you can uh, decide to kind of use this hour however you want to. But uh, if you're if you're not paying attention, then you're basically not only going to fail in the class, but you're going to fail in your practice. So you basically are going to get in, um, you're going to get out of your practice what you put into it. You're going to get out of this class preparing for the real world what you put into it. So, uh, good words of wisdom from Dean Clark, who is just a a real. Uh, character, tons of energy, just a just a great dean. Um, really cared about the students, and and uh, you know always always enjoyed being in that class with him. That was the only class that I actually got to take with with Dean Clark. But um, the uh, the E Myth was just like the, this total mindset change when it came to the importance of systems in the business. And basically, as I read each chapter, I saw myself in the uh, the main character in the book, which is a, a lady named Sarah who is running a bakery. Um, if you have not read The E-Myth, this is to me like a game-changing book from, from the world of business and in the business world, in the law practice world, this has been the most important and impactful book that I have read for my law practice. Um, so emphasizes, uh, Gerber emphasizes the need for systems in your law practice. And one thing, um, uh, one, one line from there, uh, from the E-Myth is that systems run the business and people run the systems. Systems run the business and people run the systems. Again, if you do not have systems in your uh, in your office, really nothing is running the business, right? You're you're missing a massive link in terms of the importance of uh, uh, having having a, a thriving and um, lifestyle supporting practice. If there's no systems in, in reality, there is no business. It is just work getting done haphazardly uh, without any specific um, thought process in terms of how that's going to go. So it really just was this, this mindset shift. I came back um, uh, based on uh, what, what was in the book, developed an, uh, an organizational chart and kind of you know, saw where is the work getting done? What processes and systems do we need for each stage of the case timeline? What, uh, what do we need to develop system-wise um, uh, in order to um, take payments, to do uh, you know, trust accounting in terms of uh, intake and marketing and branding? You know, how are we developing um, uh, bringing in new clients? How are we uh, making sure that those new clients are getting the support that they need immediately after they call the office? How are we responding quickly to that? Um, what, what are our sources of branding and advertising? What are the case management systems that we are using? So again, I described kind of the makeshift uh, case management system that we were using originally. We now use um, Clio Manage for our case management system and primarily Clio Grow for our uh, kind of branding and uh, marketing CRM support. I mean, I really have enjoyed using Clio Grow and Clio Manage, really powerful impact that that has had um, in, in terms of being able to maintain good communication, great um, uh, inner communication with the team, uh, communication with clients, making sure that we're not missing, you know, court dates, having all of our documents in one place. I mean, it is a really powerful um 
uh, case management software. Um, how are we, you know, how originally, how am I developing as an attorney? What is my system for getting better at practicing law? Um, now that we are a, a larger team with multiple attorneys, how are we developing as a team? What is our training uh, process? What CLEs are we going to go to as a group? How are we doing mock trial days? Um, you know, uh, how are we preparing documents? How are we making sure that anytime something is going to be uh, created once or, or, or more, more than once in terms of a court document, how are we systematizing that so that we can make sure that it happens each and every time effort, effortlessly, the same way, same outcome, same process, everybody understands what's happening. And we are far from perfect. You know, with it, you know, this is, you know, part of the part of the fun of developing your systems is they're always getting better, always getting better. And that's part of the reason why at the law firm, it's not just about creating systems. It's about creating innovative systems, right? Innovative systems. So uh, Google, the, this is the, the definition of system from, uh, from a Google search, basically. Uh, system is a set of principles or procedures according to which something is done, an organized framework or method. So again, obviously that's what you need in order to have a business. You have to have the, the process working each and every time the exact same way. If you are not putting in systems, then you are duplicating your work. Every single time, if you're recreating the uh, recreating the process, um, you're you're really losing out on time, which is the most important thing for a lot of uh, attorneys and law firms because we're service based. That is really how we are able to help our clients is through properly using our time to help our clients. So by having systems in place with regard to everything that happens in the firm from you know the the uh, thought process of how am i going to market what is my system for marketing and branding myself not just for the next month but for the next 2 years 5 years 10 years how am i going to market myself over the long term, what is my system going to be for doing that? What are some of the systems that I have in place for advertising and following up on on whatever advertising things that I'm doing? Um, what, what is my system again for intake? Um, how am I getting uh, client information? How am I collecting payments? How am I getting retained? What information am I sending to a client after I get retained? Um, how am I uh, requesting discovery from the DA's office? How am I um, uh, filing any pretrial motions and making sure that I'm not missing any deadlines or making sure that I'm not missing filing something that needs to get filed? All of these things, if we're having to think about them on each and every case, uh, or in each and every circumstance, we are wasting massive amounts of time. Systems are time savers. At the end of the day, they are what makes your business a business because it becomes a recognizable process. The reason why McDonald's is a system and not a business is because if you uh, go to McDonald's in Montana, or you go to a McDonald's in Florida, it's going to you know taste the same. The wrapping paper is going to be the same. The building is going to look similar. Logo is going to be on. The uniforms that the people are wearing inside are going to be the same way. It's going to take approximately the same time to get from the drive-through line to the uh, uh, to the to the window. That's because of the systems. That's because of the process that has been put into place by McDonald's. And that's the main uh, example used by uh, Gerber in the E-Myth is, is the kind of like uh, incredible beauty of McDonald's, not because their food is incredible or because you know they have the absolute most friendly service. It's because of the incredible attention to detail that uh, Ray Kroc put into this systematize and the McDonald brothers put into this systematization of that 
business and the replicability of the customer experience because of that experience. So it is just an incredible, um, uh, incredibly important thing to have those systems. Now, again, for us, core value isn't systems, right? It isn't just systems that is part of the core value, but it's also innovative, right? Innovative systems. So Google defines innovative as introducing new ideas, original and creative thinking, or featuring new methods, advanced and original. So again, this new and original and creative thinking. Now, the beauty of that is that systems, when you think of a system, it's something that kind of happens over and over and again, uh, the same way each and every time. The, and that's awesome. You know, you need to have this replicability so that you're not wasting your time. Where I think the legal industry has gotten bogged down is that basically we have created that replicability. I mean, we um, almost everybody uses, you know, form motions and has um, form documents for things that are filed in court, form letters. You know, we, we're, we're used to that. Where the legal industry has gotten bogged down is on innovation, on updating. If you look at the software that is used by the court system to keep track of cases, the ACES system in North Carolina, which we're all familiar with, it's awful. I mean, it is absolutely embarrassing that in 2022, that is the height of technology for, for handling you know, some of the most important stuff that's happening in the state, people's lives being on the line with regards to these cases, that this is the best software that can be used is just insanity. Now, is it user, user friendly? Somewhat. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's so outdated at this point, I would argue it's kind of not user friendly, but, you know, it's, it's pretty basic. And so there is value in having kind of a basic framework, but there is just so much great technology that exists out there. And what becomes hard is always pushing the limit to kind of how can we take what we are doing currently system wise and make it better. That's what's missing a lot of times in the, in the legal industry is the innovation side of things. So in regards to case management uh, processes, you know, 10, 15 years ago, pretty much everybody had a case management process, each firm, but because we weren't cloud, you know, uh, lawyers weren't cloud-based and we didn't have all of these great resources online, everybody's kind of doing that in their own way from their uh, computers. And maybe you have like a, um, uh, uh, an intranet at your office. And so people were sharing, you know, within their own office uh, on a, on a shared server, all of the documents or whatever might go into the, to the, uh, the client f file or folders, or, you know, where, where are we going to find these kind of forms, um, that we can use to draft motions and pleadings and that type of thing. Um, you know, you, you might have that kind of shared networking, but really the internet is so powerful for us. And it's, it's a, game changer for the solo practitioner. It's a game changer for the attorney that is operating on their own because it basically makes available the, the you know, kind of the best software that exists out there for case management. When I was, when I was coming up, I started using um, the case management soft, uh, software. I think it's called Rocket Matter, which was, was great. And again, what we use at the office is Clio, Clio Grow and Clio Manage. And if you, if, if when I sit back and think about the amount of time that is saved by Clio Grow and Clio Manage, it is kind of incredible. It's kind of incredible how much uh, value there is coming out of Clio Grow and Clio Manage. It's really impressive. So the th that's what's so so uh, amazing, and we're not even tapping into some of the uh, most unique and helpful features of Clio Grow 
and Clio manage that, you know, we're not even kind of, uh, uh, we're barely utilizing some of the features at the office that we could, but there's just so much value in terms of the time savers that are within those softwares. And that's where this kind of innovation comes in because again, do we have to, to be creative on our own as, as lawyers? Yes, we do. But we also, you know, can let other, other people go out and, and, and kind of be the innovators for us, such as a, a client management software, such as um, uh, a hiring recruiter, right? If, if we don't want to have, you know, if, we, if we're trying to develop a system for uh, hiring somebody, how are we going to advertise for a position? What is the copy for the uh, position going to be uh, when I put that out there? What is the process for receiving a cover letter and a um, uh, an application and, and a uh, resume? What is going to be the process for scheduling an interview? Who's going to be involved in the interview? How many interviews are we going to have? Is there going to be any uh, tests or updates that we need from the uh, uh, you know uh, f- writing samples or um, typing test, whatever it might be? Uh, before that person uh, is actually hired on. If we don't have that figured out, and I would submit to you that most of us do not have hiring figured out very well uh, as, as a law profession, it's just not within our wheelhouse. There are companies that exist out there that are uh, recruiting companies, that this is what they do. They specialize in this and they have created the system for it. So I think a lot of the a lot of the innovation does not if, if you if you say, well, this all sounds great, but I'm not a very creative person. If you're if you're not a systematic person, you got to change that. There's no, I mean, there, you, you literally cannot have a bis- business without systems. So you've got to have, you got to have systems in, in place. You, you know, there, you know, if, uh, if you say I'm just a free spirited lawyer that, uh, that, you know, I, I just am not going to be able to buy into the system thing. Your business is not going to survive that. I mean, that's just the long and the short of it is that you cannot survive without systems, but in terms of innovation, if we're not creative, there is a way to outsource that creativity. If you don't want to answer your own phones now, there are so many extremely talented companies that exist out there that will answer the phones for your firm at a great cost with incredible uh, customer service, with the ability to leave messages and answer calls long after you want to be answering phone calls before you want to get into the office. And, um, uh, and it can create, you know, what we use, we use back office Betty's Um, they have been a great uh, 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 virtual assistant company to work with. They create Clio, um, uh, Clio matters for us. They, you know, Clio grow matters. So, so they'll do intake. I mean, it's what we, we've got, we've got such an incredible amount of resources at our disposal because of the internet and because of some of the incredible software and, uh, services that exist out there now for lawyers, these other companies that have kind of come into the legal industry and said, how can we create a systematic improvement to this part of the process? So, um, uh, just wanted to kind of go through that core core value uh, with you. Of you know, kind of the, this is one of the things that we are focusing on during this quarter as an office. Again, if you don't have if you don't have systems in place at your at your law firm, it's not a business. It is a it's either you individually or a collection of people um, uh, uh, providing legal advice, helping in the courthouse, uh, you know, drafting and preparing motions, but it's not a law practice. It's not a business without the systems. And we always have to be updating those systems. We are really, you, you know, and, and, and this is, you know, mea culpa on my end, it took me way longer to get into some of the uh, systems that we're currently using at the office than it should have. You know, it's always difficult to switch systems or to upgrade or to innovate or to um, improve systems because 
Now that requires time and research of finding what exists out there, uh, uh, implementing that, getting your team trained up on it. And there's growing pains that come with that. When we switched over from our case, you know, our makeshift case management system to Clio, it was painful. But three weeks in, we realized this, you know, we should have done this years ago. I mean, literally like years ago, we should have upgraded to a case management system. When we've switched uh, from, you know, one um, uh, payment payment uh, source to another, huge pain, you know, huge pain in terms of training, um, you know, figuring out how to take payments. What does this new software look like? But when it's been for the betterment of uh, the office, if it's easier, it's more compatible with other software that we use, again, within two or three weeks, there's this just overall recognition, man, we should have done this a lot sooner. And the reason we didn't is we were stuck in the system that we were working in. So we got to start somewhere. You know, if you don't have a system for something, create one, sit down, get it figured out, and then realize it's not going to be anywhere near perfect on the first try. It's not going to be perfect on the fifth try. It's not going to be perfect on the 50th try. There's always going to be innovation. Um, Albert Einstein, who is, you know, probably one of the most prolific uh, figures in recent history. Everybody, you know, when, 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 we, when, we, when we talk about Einstein, everybody knows who that is. House, household name in the, uh, in the science world is not necessarily an easy thing to achieve, but everybody, everybody knows when you're talking about Einstein, you're talking about brilliance, academic brilliance. Albert Einstein said, the true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. If we want to have law practices that really do break the mold, that really do wow clients, that really are different in the world, we have to bring that imagination. We have to bring that creativity, that innovation into the legal marketplace. This is going to be something that we are going to, you know, whatever, whatever practicing law looks like uh, 20 years from now, will I, I believe be unrecognizable from what we are doing day to day in the courtroom. And it's so hard to kind of constantly be thinking about where are the places for improvement? Where could the system be better? Where could the legal system be better? You know, what, what, you know, our court system, where could, wh how can we help improve the uh, application and the ease in which people have access to justice in the court system? How can we make that easier and more available and improve the legal processes that are in place currently? How do we improve that? But also within our own practices, how can we improve uh, the way that we are doing things in our individual law firms? Sitting down and thinking about these things is important. It's really important to kind of have this constant reflection on improving the system. So uh, if you don't have systems, get out and, and write them down, write down what your process looks like currently. You don't even have to make one up. Just write down what your process looks like currently and then take some time and think about how can I improve it. If you already have systems in place, procedures, protocols in place for how you handle uh, marketing, branding, taking payments, case management, uh, running your trust account, um, uh, uh, sending closing letters to clients, whatever it might be, sit down and look at ways to improve it because the fun part of practicing law is that we're never going to stop improving how we are delivering our services to our clients. Look forward to speaking with you next time. If you found the information in this podcast to be valuable, I simply ask that you pay it forward and share this podcast with another member of the legal community also, if you would leave us a rating or a review on whatever platform you are listening on, I would greatly appreciate it.